salita na tulad ng pag-asa, kaluwalhatian, ligaya, maggalak na matatagpuan sa gitna ng pagsubok at paghihirap ng mga Kristiyano dito sa 1 Peter. Ito ay isang praktikal na liham na nagbibigay payo at lakas sa lahat ng mga kapatiran na siyempre lalo na yung mga na may hinaharap na mga pagsubok. Now, the, the, the letter of 1 Peter is often called the letter of hope because there are words that keep coming up, keep being repeated in the letter. Words like hope and glory, and joy, and rejoicing, even in the midst and in the heart of test, testings and trials and tribulation. This is a very practical letter that strengthens the brethren, especially as they face trials and temptations and testings. So, ang Pag nag-aaral tayo ng ganito, inuuna natin kung sino yung may akda o sino yung nagsulat nito. Now, tandaan natin, lahat ng books ng Bible, isa lang ang tunay na may akda nito. Yan ay ang banal na espiritu ng Diyos. Alright? At uh, nandun sa notes ninyo yung mga Bible references para patunayan na ang Holy Spirit talaga ang, may, ang tunay na may akda ng Bible. Now, when we, whenever we study the Bible, we always have to look at who wrote it, when did he write it, what were the situation, why he wrote it, what's the message, what it's, what's it about, what are the geography, what, what are the, some of the information that we find in the book. And, uh, but you have to always remember that there's only one author of First Peter, one author of the entire Bible, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit's book. This Bible is a Holy Spirit book. It's a miracle book from God. And he's the author. Okay? The Holy Spirit is the author. And uh, now, uh, since he, the Holy Spirit, is the author, who did the Holy Spirit use? to give us the book of First Peter. Well, it says in chapter 1, verse number 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. So he used Peter to give us First and Second Peter. And uh, it's funny because it says here, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. So you got to look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the book of Acts. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you find a man named Peter in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Acts? who happened to be an apostle of Jesus Christ? Do you have someone like that? Yes, okay, well, that means that's the Peter we're talking about. <laughs> and so we're going to learn all about Peter today. We're gonna to look at Peter today. Now, <clears throat> so ang manunulat ay si Peter. Ang may akda yung banal na Espiritu ng Diyos. Now, Peter didn't literally write First Peter. He spoke the words, and he had a secretary write First Peter. The name of the secretary is Sylvanus. Sylvanus. Look at First Peter chapter five and verse number twelve. First Peter chapter five and verse number twelve. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. And so Peter used Sylvanus. And another name for Sylvanus is Silas. Do you remember? Paul and Silas. Silas was a man in the church uh, at Jerusalem who was faithful to the word of God, a faithful worker. And uh, Paul, and when Paul was going to go to his second missionary journey, he looked among the church of Jerusalem to find a good man, and Silas was found faithful. And he was able to help with uh, Peter, uh, help with Paul, and now he's helping Peter. And so this is a, a very good uh, Christian. Now let's go back to Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so... 
we're going to look at Peter. Now, uh, like you and me, Peter had several names. Or look at Peter's names, okay? Uh, one of his names is Simon. He was called Simon, the son of Jonah, <laughs> or in the Bible, Bar-Jonah, Simon Bar-Jonah. And that's just an Ar Aramaic way of saying the son of of a man whose name is Jonah, okay? So Simon is his name. Then he was also called Simeon, Simeon. So that's in Acts chapter 15. They call him Simeon, but it's the same Simon, and that's Peter. Then he's also called Peter, Peter. And this is the nickname, this is the surname that Jesus gave to Simon. Jesus said, you are Peter. Oh my. And uh, you know what Peter means? Peter comes from a word that means stone, a, a little rock or a stone, a pebble, uh, uh, something like that. Sturdy, strong stone. And uh, this is where some people get confused because when Jesus said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. People think that, oh, Jesus built the church on Peter, and so he becomes the first pope. And that is not what the Bible teaches. Now, Peter explains to us who the foundation of the church is. And it's not him. It's not Peter. Look at uh, look at first. Let's see here. Look at um, 1 Peter chapter 2. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. Who is the rock that Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church? Who's that foundation? Is it Peter? Well, what did Peter say? Well, 1 Peter chapter 2. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 3. And if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious... To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, an holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, verse number six, also it is contained in the scripture, behold. I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So who is the chief cornerstone of the spiritual house of the New Testament church or the New Testament churches? It's not Peter. Peter is stone, rock, small pebble. It's Jesus Christ, the chief corner stone. The, uh, uh, the, the name for that is uh, Petra, the rock. Oh, it's not just a little rock like this. It's a rock, almost like a boulder or bigger than that. And uh, that's the foundation of the church. It's not Peter. It's Jesus Christ. And Peter himself said it. Peter himself confessed that Jesus is the foundation. And so uh, we gladly accept Peter's testimony. And we don't accept tradition that men have taught us to say, no, that's Peter. <laughs> okay, no, it's not. <laughs> All right. So his name is Simon, Simeon, Peter. And there's another name. And we find that in John chapter 1, verse 42. You don't have to turn there. But another name is Cephas, Cephas, and that, that's just another Aramaic form, another language, uh, referring to Peter. Again, it's just a different uh, culture, different language, and we call him Cephas. And uh, you'll find that in your study notes here. Anyway, so, tingnan naman natin yung background. What about Peter? What's so special about, what's his background? You know, what did he do before he became an apostle or became, before he, he did that? So let's see. Siya ay dating mangingisda. 
na kasama ng kanyang kapatid na si Andrew. So, he was a fisherman and he went fishing with his brother Andrew. And uh, let's see, uh, not only was he a fisherman with Andrew, his brother, but he had a business. Uh, he, was a, he was a great fisherman, had a business with two other of his friends, the sons of Zebedee, James and John. Oh, so there was a partnership in the fishing business. They, this was a, the, he was a skillful man. He was a hardworking man. He was a man that knew how to manage his money, knew how to manage his time. He was a very, very wise and crafty fisherman, a businessman also very, I would say he was a wealthy man. We think, you know, the apostles were poor and they, they didn't have anything. Oh, that's not so. Not if you read the Bible, okay? Look over, for example, in Luke, no. Well, let's look at uh, Luke chapter five, verse number 10. Let's go ahead with Luke chapter five, verse number 10. Luke chapter five and verse number 10. And also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So they had a partnership in the fishing business. Let, look over in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And verse number 18. I don't believe that Jesus calls lazy people to work for him. I don't believe Jesus calls unskilled and untrained and untaught, uh, uneducated and, uh, uh, men, lazy men. Oh, no. Uh, Jesus works with, with everyone, of course, but when it comes to his apostles, he chooses hard-working men who know how to work. Look at Mark chapter number uh, 4 and verse number 18. Mark 4, 18. And these are they which are... Oh, I'm sorry. Where, where am I? Matthew. <laughs> I was in <laughs> Mark. Sown among the thorns. Oh, boy, no. That's... That's not what I'm looking for. Matthew chapter number four and verse number 18. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And so they were busy, busy men, men of strength, men, men who knew how to work. And uh, uh, Peter was a man, a, a strong man. He pulled the net by himself, a net full of fish by himself. Look at John chapter number 21. Oh, this is not a wimp. Uh, this is not some small dude. <laughs> he was a muscle man, okay? He was a hardworking man. John chapter 21 and verse number 11. John 21, verse number 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and 150 and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. I didn't read anybody helping him do that. He pulled it by himself. Oh, he was a, a strong man. Now, <clears throat> uh, something else interesting about Peter, he, uh, he owned his own house. He had his own house. He had a wife, okay? For those that don't know, yung iba, akala nila si Peter yung unang papa ng simbahan. Uh, hindi ho pwede siya na maging unang papa ng simbahan kasi may asawa ho siya. <laughs> All right? At yung mga, uh, yung, yung mga apostol, may mga asawa po yan, may mga pamilya po yan. And, uh, and so he had a house and uh, he was... He had a wife, and he even has a mother-in-law, <laughs> or at least the mother-in-law was still alive. And in fact, she was sick, and uh, they asked the Lord to heal her. And so uh, let's look at that. Look at Matthew chapter number 8. Go over to Matthew chapter number 8. So we're learning about Peter. 
the kind of man that he is, a little bit about his background. Uh, Matthew chapter number 8. Uh, let's see here. And verse number 14. Matthew 8, 14. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house. Oh, this fisherman has means. He wasn't just a poor bum. He was a hardworking, good man, good business, good livelihood, good living, invested his money to purchase a house, to, pro to, to provide for his family, his wife. And he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And so he has a family, this Peter. Now, he wasn't just a young man. Some people think, you know, sila daw napakabata pa ng mga apostol. No, uh, he, was a, he was a grown man with his own wife and his own business partnership. And so <clears throat> this, is a, this is who Peter is. This is his background. And so uh, I'm just thankful that God uses busy people. God doesn't call into his ministry lazy bums. And that's the thing. You got to watch out for people I'm called of God. No, you're called to study the Word of God. You're called to work hard. <laughs> you're not called to, 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 to just get up and talk. No, nobody needs that kind of a preacher. We want preachers that are hardworking men who could lead their home and manage their finances and, and do right uh, with the things that God has given them. Good, solid men. And that's the kind of men that Jesus is working with. And so that's the kind of men we want to work with also in the ministry. Now, <clears throat> let's look at Peter's call. When did God call Peter to the work of the ministry? Well, look over in John chapter number one. John chapter number one. And this is very important to remember because when, when you look at somebody who has the call of God in their life, dapat katulad ni Peter, yung pangyayari. Narinig nila ang patungkol sa Panginoon, sila ay naligtas at nagpabaptize at handa ng sumunod sa Panginoon. And in that order, he was saved, then he was baptized, and then he was willing to follow Jesus. Look at John chapter number 1, verse number 40. John chapter 1, verse 40. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And so there begins that Peter's call uh, to serve the Lord. And, um, and of course, he was baptized by John the Baptist. And we know that one of the requirements of being an apostle is that you, had, you have to have received the baptism of John, according to Acts chapter number 1. Kaya pag may pagalagala na nagsasabi sila ay apostol, pero hindi nila nakita si Kristo, hindi naman sila nabaptize ni John the Baptist, at hindi nila nakita na bumangon na maguli ang Panginoong Iso Kristo, pisika, literal, sa kanilang mata. Pag may nagsasabing sila ay apostol, takbuhan mo na yun, huwag mo nang pakinggan yung taong ganun. Sira ang ulo niya, sapagkat may mga requirements sa Bible patungkol sa pagiging apostol. And there are apost apostolic requirements. And one of that is that they had to have been baptized by John the Baptist. They had to have been called personally by Jesus. They had to have seen the resurrected Christ. And so if somebody is saying, I'm an apostle today, they're crazy. Don't listen to them. They, don't, they do not follow the scriptural standard for an apostle. So do we have apostles today? No. <laughs> but do we have apostolic teachings today? Yes. Where? In the word of God. This is the apostles' doctrine. 
See, this is the apostles' teaching. This is the tradition that we have gained from Paul and Peter, James, uh, Jude, and all on and on, so forth. Even the writings of Luke and Mark, although they're not apostles, they were apostolic in office. And they were holy men of God who spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so we receive the words of the Lord through their ministry, through their teaching, and through the preservation of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. <clears throat> now, um, tinawag siya na dapat iwanan niya ang lahat. Remember, Jesus called them to forsake all, to forsake everything, to follow him. And I believe Jesus is calling people today to forsake everything, to follow him. Uh, sometimes we are so full of things that we're so distracted that instead of following him, we follow what we follow something else. Take time during this pandemic to follow him. Follow Christ. Uh, now, siya, tinawag siya na maging apostol. Tinawag siya na maging uh, pangalawang pastor. Nang unang iglesia. Did you know that Peter was the second pastor of the first church? The first New Testament church. Do you know what the first New Testament church is in the Bible? It's the church in Galilee. People say the church in Jerusalem. No, it's the church in Galilee. <laughs> Look over in Matthew chapter 28. Go over to Matthew 28. Verse number 16, Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them, and then he gave them the Great Commission. Okay, this is the church at Galilee. <laughs> and then, of course, eventually that church moved, and then they moved into Jerusalem, and then, of course, uh, the great miracle in Acts chapter 2 came where they're numbers increased but those uh, numbers they were they received the word with gladness they were baptized and they were added so that was membership church membership okay this is God's program and the first pastor guess who that was who's the first pastor of the church at Gap in Galilee Jesus that's right and after Jesus who became the pastor Peter, that's right. He's the second. And then when Peter stepped down, who became the third pastor? Do you know? James. James became the third pastor, and Peter planted other churches. He planted churches in Joppa and other places. Uh, oh, God used him. Read the book of Acts, chapter 8, 9, and 10. Uh, Peter was greatly used of God. At first as a uh, a disciple, then an apostle, then a pastor, then a missionary, church planter, uh, an evangelist, and so on and so forth. Uh, Peter then, of course, is used of God to write First and Second Peter. Now, so uh, he's also specially appointed apostle to the Jews, and uh, we know that. Um, let's look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 7. Interesting uh, that the, the Bible recognizes him as the uh, apostle to the Jews. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse number 7. Paul said this, But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, so Paul was uh, the gospel of the Gentiles, that goes to Paul, and the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, was unto Peter. So Peter had some struggles about fellowshipping with Gentiles because he didn't want uh, the, the brethren, the Jewish brethren, to, to think less of him. And that was a mistake in Peter's life that got corrected, by the way. And Paul corrected Peter. You know, Peter learned to be a humble man to receive a rebuke from a younger preacher, from a less lesser preacher, uh, if I could say it like that. Uh, but uh, he was a humble man. 
and uh, definitely uh, dedicating his life to reaching the Jews for Jesus Christ. And that's why when you go to 1 Peter chapter 1, let's see, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 1, you find his letter being, being an encouragement to the brethren that are in the Jewish churches that have been persecuted and have been scattered. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the stranger scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. I wish I had our geography, Bible geography notebook. Wala yung Bible geography notebook natin as a church, as a church building. Uh, at sana makita ninyo yung map kung nasaan ang Pontus, nasaan ang Galatia, nasaan ang Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. These are real geographic locations. You, if you have a Bible map, you could look for them. You could see them. And uh, Peter wanted to encourage the Jewish churches that have been scattered, the brethren that have been scattered. And not only did he encourage them, but he encourages us also because we are Christian brothers in Christ. And we can draw a lot of hope and encouragement through his letters. Now, let, let's look at Peter's character. Now, we see Peter's name, Peter's background, Peter's call. Ngayon, tignan natin yung ugali ni Peter. At dito ang excitement kasi yung ugali ni Peter katulad din natin paminsan. Uh, we see ourselves a lot in Peter. We see ourselves a lot in Peter. If there's one word that summarizes Peter, I say the word would be impulsive. Impulsive. You just open your mouth and insert your foot. Now, sa mga taga-alog, hindi nyo alam yung expression na ganun. Open your mouth, insert your foot. No? Ano yun, pastor? Foot long. Hindi, biro. Biro lang. Hindi foot long yun, ha? Uh, paminsan, ang ugali ni Peter ay katulad natin. Binubuksan niya yung bunga nga niya, pero yung mga lumalabas, palpak at mali, tapos kakainin niya yung sarili niyang mga sinasabi. So, but Peter is just like that, all right? Uh, remember, Peter said to Jesus, Bid me come unto thee on the water. Sabi ni Peter, Gusto ko rin maglakad sa tubig, Lord. And Jesus said, come. Remember that? And he stepped out. Now, there are some good things about it. Peter wanted to see something amazing. He wanted to see some something for himself. No other disciple would have thought like that. But remember when Peter took his eyes off of the Lord and he saw the storm and he saw the wind and he saw the waves, he started to sink. Remember that? And he prayed the shortest prayer, Lord, save me. <laughs> and Jesus saved him and rescued him, okay, from drowning. And uh, what an impulsive guy. Remember when Jesus was explaining how he was to be crucified? Guess what Paul said? Uh, guess what Peter said? He said, this shall not be. Oh. Jesus said, my mission is to die on the cross. And here is Peter, this shall not be. How are you going to tell Jesus no? How, how does that work? But Peter did. <laughs> and it's just like us Christians. Alam natin kung anong dapat natin gawin. Alam natin kung anong layunin ng Diyos. Pero sa, kahit na alam natin ang layunin ng Diyos, ang ugali pa rin natin sabihin, wag, hindi mangyayari yan. No, sa Panginoon. Oh, can you do that? Peter did. Naalala ninyo doon sa, doon sa Mount of Transfiguration. Remember the Mount of Transfiguration where Peter... Huh? woke up, he was slumbering and woke up and he said, shall I build three tabernacles? <laughs> but he didn't understand what he was saying. I don't know if you ever do that when you wake up and you have no clue what you're talking about. Well, Peter was that way. Peter said, well, can we just make three tents over here that you guys can hang out and stay? You know, and, and, and of course, Jesus, that would make Jesus equal with Moses and Elijah. And Jesus is not equal with them. He's superior to them. And so Peter had no idea what he was doing, what he was talking about. Remember when Jesus said, I will cleanse you. 
I will wash your feet. And Peter said, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus said, Well, if I don't wash you, then I have you have no part of me. And then Peter said, Well, then wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my head. And Jesus had to correct him again and said, No, you are clean. All you need is your feet to be washed. You just need a cleansing. You don't need a bath. And so what a picture of Christians. What a picture. Contradicting the Lord. Uh, trying to do his own thing. <laughs> and so remember the high priest had a servant at the Garden of Gethsemane where they were going to take Jesus out to the cross. Who, who cut the the high priest's servant, who smote his ear? Peter. It was Peter. Oh, he was ready to fight, ready to, ready to cut someone's ear off for the Lord, you know. But the Lord, that's not how the Lord works. God doesn't use violence in the church. Okay, maybe in the Old Testament, but not in the New Testament church. <laughs> Nobody uses a sword unless you're Muslim or something like that. You know, they use a sword. But our sword is the spiritual sword. This is our sword. The sword of the word of God. We allow the word to do the work. Not the flesh. Not the flesh. Don't ever serve God in the power of the flesh. It'll, you'll fail every time. Serve the Lord in the power of the word of God. Let this word do the work for you. Uh, and so, remember when Peter was discouraged after he blew it? He said, I go a fishing. All right. He didn't return to his job as an, a pastor. He didn't return to his job as an apostle. He said, I'll just go fishing. I'll hang it up. I blew it. <laughs> I denied the Lord. <laughs> I didn't stand for him. I said I was going to stand for him, but I didn't. I blew it. And he was so discouraged. He said, I'll just go fishing. And remember how the Lord came to him. And challenged him. You know, have you ever been discouraged before? Well, Peter was. And have you ever had God come and restore you and revive you and encourage you and set you back on the right road so you can serve the Lord? Oh, that's Peter. That's Peter. There's one more thing about Peter that I think is very interesting. Look at John 21. John chapter 21. Isapa. Sa ugali ni Peter, na sa palagay ko, ito talaga ang ugali natin. John chapter 21, verse number 21. Ano yung ugali ni Peter na parang tayo? John chapter 21, verse 21. Peter seeing him saith to Jesus. <laughs> Peter saw John, okay? He saw John, the beloved apostle. Peter seeing John saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? And Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Huh. Follow thou me. Oh, one thing about Peter, he always sticks his nose in somebody else's business. Oh, 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 what, what is he doing? What is she doing? What are, what's everybody? Let me check their Facebook page and see what they're doing. Oh, what about it, Lord? You know what Jesus told him? He said, he said, button, well, he didn't say this. It's in the Greek. Button your lip and stay out of everybody else's business. I'm kidding. He didn't say that. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, what is that to thee? Don't, don't mind others. Don't mind what other people are doing. You have a work that God called you to do. You have a task that God commissioned you to do. You do what God called you to do. Don't look at somebody else and say, well, I'll, I'll do what they do. Or what about them? Or how are they going to do this? Or how are we going to do this? No. Find God's will and do God's will, and don't worry about somebody else. You know why? Because they will answer to Jesus, and so will you. You will answer to Jesus. 
Kaya huwag tayong mag- makialam sa iba. Eh, pastor, tingnan mo yung ginagawa nito. Pastor, tingnan mo yung ginagawa ng ganon. Alam mo, gusto kong uh, ipakita sa iyo itong John 21, 21 at saka 22 kasi sinabi ng Panginoon, ano, 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 ano sa iyo yun? Kung anong gusto kong gawin kay Juan, gagawin ko kay Juan. Ay ano sa iyo yun? Bali saan yun sa iyo? Wala. Ikaw, sumunod ka na lang sa akin. That's the thing you need to be concerned about. Am I following Jesus? Don't worry about following somebody else. <laughs> And don't worry if they're following Jesus neither. <laughs> you just worry that you follow Jesus. So anyway, <clears throat> what shall this man do? That Peter is just like you and me. Just like you and me. No different. And the, so the Bible is true. He is just like any man. He's just like a regular man. Except, of course, the call of God upon him and how God changed him and transformed him. Now, one last verse. Look at Luke chapter 22. Peter, just a colorful Christian man that God used in a mighty way. And if God could use Peter, God could use you and me because we're exactly the same. We just need to be surrendered to the Lord, yielded to the Lord. Luke chapter 22 and verse number 31. Tingnan mo ang sabi dito sa Luke 22, verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen thy brethren. You know, Peter preached boldly on Pentecost. And over and over again, Peter, when he got strengthened, when he got converted, truly changed and sanctified by the Lord, Peter became a bold preacher of the word of God, used over and over and over again by the Lord in, in, in reaching others in saving lost souls and establishing New Testament uh, Bible-believing Baptist churches. Oh, it's an amazing thing that God used Peter But he said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I believe that Peter was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write First and Second Peter. Why? To strengthen his brethren. And so we have the letter of First and Second Peter as a, uh, an answer to, to the Lord's request, to the Lord's prayer for him. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You know, Peter was a fisherman who became a fisher of men. And God wants to use us the same way, to catch people for the Lord. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? And let's pray and ask the Lord to bless Learning all about Peter, and we're learning about Peter. Uh, go ahead and take that off there. Let's bow and pray and ask God to bless. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the example that we have in Peter. That although he's flesh, Lord, you changed him, you transformed him. And we see a lot of ourselves in Peter. And so, Lord, we ask that you would transform us and convert us so that we may strengthen the brethren, just like Peter did. Lord, we ask your blessing upon us. While your head's bowed and your eyes are closed, let me ask you a question. How many would say, that as you look at your life, you see yourself in Peter and uh, you see a lot of weaknesses, but it's time to surrender that to the Lord and ask the Lord to bless. See yourself as Peter, impulsive, oh, you say things and then 
you, you have to eat your words or insert your foot in your mouth. We're so much like that. I pray and ask God to sanctify you and to strengthen you. And when God strengthens you, strengthen your brethren. Strengthen your brethren. Would you do that? I pray you would. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you, God, for the word. We thank you that we can gather together around the word of God and be challenged by the word. And I pray you would do a work in our hearts. Help us to focus on you, not to focus on others or other things or situations. Help us to follow you and help us to strengthen one another. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, I, I do want to mention Merong uh, Kunting Sunlight. That's why you, it kind of looks different because of the sun. This, yeah, it's, it's like an angel. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. Baka ano angel, no? Angel galing sa ano? Sa araw, ano ba yan? No, it's not. Biru lang po. Don't forget Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night at 7.30 Wednesday night, no? Mag uh, live stream ulit tayo. Pag may kailangan mga kapatiran, paki-messenger, handa po kaming tumulong sa inyo at uh, ang pananalangin namin ay suma sa inyo. Let's pray one for another. 7.30 Wednesday night. God bless you. And don't forget to wash your hands. Sanitize. Sanitize the surfaces too. Wear a mask. Oh, there's a lot you can do. Anyway, God bless you.